For as long as I could remember, I dreamed of having a loving husband, three kids, and a dog. I pictured our family living on the outskirts of town with a big yard and a garden. I imagined myself working from home and homeschooling my littles until they were old enough for public school. I saw myself sitting on the bus, attending school field trips, and also sitting in the stands, cheering them on at every basketball game. I wanted to create a life that allowed me to be truly present in their lives. And I wanted them to know how extraordinary they are and how much they are loved. I got a taste of this dream when I was 12 years old and I became an aunt to a beautiful baby boy. And I remember it like it was yesterday, volunteering to care for my nephew in the night, feeding him bottles, changing stinky diapers, and rocking him back to sleep. There was something so special about caring for another human being, loving him and nurturing him, that came so naturally to me. I would stare into his eyes in what I could only describe as unconditional love. I knew I was meant to be mother. Many of the women in my family, they became moms at a young age, and I decided I wanted to begin my career before starting a family. At 17 years old, I graduated high school a semester early, eager to begin my college career as a first-generation college student. I was still unclear of my major, but I knew there was value in beginning my higher education and just figuring it out along the way. Just when I thought everything was falling into place, my entire world flipped upside down. Less than a month into my first semester of college, I received a phone call at five in the morning from my stepdad. He explained to me that my mom fell in the shower and was being transported to the hospital. When I arrived at the ER, my mom was awake and responsive, and I noticed that she kept on repeating herself over and over. Where am I? What happened? Am I going to die? While anxiously waiting for blood work and tests to come back, I reassured myself that she must have a concussion because she probably just slipped and hit her head. Her memory will come back. The doctor whipped the hospital curtain open and informed us that the brain scans indicated that she had a ruptured brain aneurysm and he would need to perform an emergency surgery right away. My panic amplified as all of my worst fears filled my brain. Is my mom going to survive? Is this the last time I will ever see her? I remember squeezing her hand before she was wheeled away, and I said one last time, I love you, Mom. After anxiously waiting many hours, the doctor brought my family and I into a small room to describe what happened in the operating room. He had repaired the ruptured brain aneurysm and explained that my mom had a small stroke but he reassured us that she would have a full recovery. However, after a series of complications, the doctor said that the stroke caused more damage than they had realized, and on February 13th, 2016, they pronounced her brain dead. My family and I were faced with the most difficult decision I have ever and will ever have to make. Suddenly, all I could think about was a woman who had shown me so much and taught me everything, would not be there to watch me grow up. She would miss out on everything in my adult life. 
walking across the stage to receive my diploma, getting married, and starting a family, and raising my children. I was devastated with the thought of my children growing up without their grandmother. I felt like my dream began to crumble because I never imagined living my life without my mom. It was the hardest times in my life. After my mother passed, I decided that there was no time to deal with the pain, and I became busy. I helped my sisters that summer with their newborns, and I tried to help any chance I could outside of working full-time and going to college classes. I wanted to be there for them since my mom wasn't. I didn't take much time to grieve, so instead I coped with a box of chocolate and a tub of ice cream. I had a tendency to care for everyone else, and I put my own needs on the back burner. But I had to keep moving forward, so I picked myself back up, and I went on to finish my associate's degree, and I started my first business as a licensed massage therapist at 19 years old. Six months into building my clientele, I began experiencing joint pain, fatigue, digestion issues, and inflammation that filled my entire body. I recognized a pattern of symptoms, but I struggled to understand where the root of the pain was coming from. I went to so many different doctors, and no one could tell me or figure out why a 20-year-old was struggling with chronic pain. So I spent my early 20s searching for answers from doctors, specialists, getting blood work and colonoscopies. I would come up empty-handed time and time again. All I wanted to understand was, what was wrong with me? Living with chronic pain, it affected my career, finances, relationships with friends and family, and it sucked the confidence right out of me. I felt broken. This was definitely not the mom I envisioned in my fantasy. I wanted to be the mom who was full of energy, chasing her kids around the yard, rolling around in the grass, laughing together. The thought of losing out on this dream, it left me heartbroken. I could feel the anxiety and depression wash over me, and it began controlling my daily life. I visited my OBGYN, and we were able to uncover some of the causes of what I was feeling. After completing my blood work and an ultrasound, I was diagnosed with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Apparently, I had a series of cysts growing on my ovaries that would just burst on a regular basis. It would cause severe stabbing pain that would knock me down for days. Where did this all come from? My body was dealing with everything happening in my life in its own way, a hormonal way. When I learned that the possible risk of PCOS is infertility, my heart sank. I started paying close attention to my body. I had spent so many years looking for doctors to make me feel better. 
Now it was time for me to discover my own inner healing. I researched so many holistic approaches to healing. I tried everything from mental health therapy, chiropractic, physical therapy, essential oils, and I even changed my lifestyle, including my diet and sleep habits. I certainly noticed a difference, yet I was still experiencing pain and inflammation in my body on a daily basis. Why did I feel so broken? Could there be still something I had not let myself deal with? One night in December of 2020, I woke up from a restless night of tossing and turning with so much pain in my body and an unusual amount of mental distress. I got up and I looked at myself in my hallway mirror and I watched as cold tears streamed down my face. I dropped to my knees. I crawled into a ball into my living room floor and I began holding my lower belly and I placed my hand on my heart. At that moment, everything came crashing to the surface. All the pain that I had been holding on to, everything that I could not face or had forgotten or I had desperately tried to ignore. Memories from my childhood, my parents' divorce, multiple reconstructive surgeries, being bullied, and losing my mom. For the first time, I allowed myself to live in and feel the pain of it all. I was shocked to discover that buried way down deep was one extremely painful event that I had completely blocked out for years. The day that I was sexually assaulted as a teenager, my body was filled with shame, guilt, anger, and sadness. I questioned if I could have prevented it, if it was all my fault. I sat there, and I held myself sobbing. I chose that day to forgive the person who hurt me. And I realized that in order for me to release this burden from my mind and body, I needed to forgive myself for placing the blame and shame on me. One month later, I went to my yearly OBGYN checkup, and to my doctor's surprise, all the cysts on my ovaries were gone. I believe on that December day that I healed my body from the emotional baggage that I was carrying for years. And as I continued on my healing journey, I felt alone and isolated, especially not having my mom beside me to discuss these things with. I found myself in a strange new place, building my massage practice, caring for and nurturing others, and I felt my own mothering intuition kicking in. But the more I paid attention to my own body, I became the mother I needed for myself. And now I finally understand that I was never broken at all. I was living through what I needed to so that I could heal. And only because of experiencing all that I have, I am now able to help others on their healing journeys. My mom, she taught me so much. And I am amazed that losing her continues to teach me lessons 
that I get to share with my clients, my loved ones, and perhaps one day, my own children.